Je passerai la parole maintenant à M. Guillaume Lénart, Global Head of Business Development de Mercuria Energy Group à Genève. Alors, Guillaume Lénart, en tant que Français, il rejoint une société suisse en 2011, après 16 ans d'expérience au sein de la banque BNP Paribas. Je tiens à insister qu'il a fortement contribué au leadership de la BNP dans le financement transactionnel et financement structuré, où il était à la fin Head of Energy and Commodities, Europe, Moyen-Orient, Afrique. Il est diplômé de l'ESCP Paris et de l'Université Paris-Dauphine, où il est en charge depuis 2014 du séminaire Geopolitics of Energy. Guillaume nous parlera du potentiel et de l'enjeu que le pétrole et le gaz naturel offshore libanais pourront représenter pour l'économie du pays, peut-être devenir un acteur majeur dans la production de gaz, ce qui générera des revenus conséquents. Je laisserai Guillaume développer cette partie. Good morning, everyone, and first of all, many thanks for the invitation. It's a, I think it's a privilege for a Frenchman to be part of a, such a fantastic debate. Um, no, in English, it's, it's okay. Um, in, in my previous life, I had the chance to look at some of the developments a bit further south uh, in the Eastern Mediterranean. And some of the questions which are being asked today were asked maybe five, six, seven years ago by your neighbors. And, um, and, and much as uh, people have put um, a long timeline to potential development here, recent history shows that with a strong determination, uh, it is possible to actually move from exploration plan to actual uh, production and gasification of a local economy within a five, five years time, time frame or even shorter. Okay, so um, given the fact that we had already some very excellent presentations, I'm going to uh, shift straight to uh, slide, uh, first of all, slide number two. Um, I think the regional aspect is, is absolutely key here. Uh, we've heard about uh, where Lebanon stands, the fact that actually the instability with uh, its other Uh, main neighbor has actually stalled or slowed down uh, the process of the development of the uh, natural resources in Lebanon um, are certainly key. But if, if we expand further, and, and I think the, um, the maps that we saw earlier uh, demonstrated, what, what the reserves which have been developed first in Egypt, then in Gaza, then in Israel, The reserves which have been proved now in Cyprus, even so there's a bit of skepticism now. Um, and, and the fact that Cyprus is the first, the, the southern easternmost point of the European Union, and is also um, an area which is itself source of an other regional conflict between um, what I would call The, the Greek and Turkish influences, um, makes the overall equation a very complex one. And I know that Lebanon, you have your internal, uh, I wouldn't say divisions, but uh, subtleties, which I, I find difficult to struggle with. Um, but, but certainly, if, if we put these um, delicacies in, 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 in the wider regional concept, um, context, sorry, it, it, it creates source of concern, but at the same time, I think it also opens up Um, what I think would be the long-term solutions for, for the sector in the region. Now, I'm, I'm going to focus more on dwelling on past experiences in countries which have had very recent and very massive development in gas, what actually gas can do good to your country. We haven't yet heard about the gas curse. Uh, curse has been limited to oil in recent history, and I hope it will remain So, so let's, let's look at what gas uh, has brought to some of, of the countries uh, which have had uh, mm -hmm. the pleasure of, of, of finding the, the resource. So um, LNG, of course, um, is and has been the, the number one uh, débouché for, for gas. But more and more, uh, local industries, also because environmental issues have become so prominent in the last 10 to 15 years, um, have really, and, and, and the quest for more power, 
uh, has, has really put gas at, at the forefront. Pro probably, if, if we look in a, in a longer term uh, uh, horizon, probably on a temporary basis, uh, because now when we can produce solar on very decent terms in Dubai, and we have uh, hydro, which is for those countries who have access to water, uh, which are also basically endless uh, resources which are free from an OPEX point of view, or quasi-free from an OPEX point of view, and just uh, necessitate long-term capex and therefore long-term government uh, determination and, and investment. Um, gas will play, I think, for the next 30 to 50 years, that buffer role um, until such time that most of the economies have actually been able to access um, the more eternal uh, energy sources. So gas in, in Lebanon, and I would take the example uh, of, of Israel. Um, Israel had initially a, a first rather small gas fine. Um, I think it was Yam Titis, which was developed in the 90s. And that one um, was actually used to start get, uh, De, uh, defueling, if you want, and decalling, decarbonating um, the power sector. And, and slowly over the years, the, uh, the National Electricity Company has started uh, converting its, 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 um, its facilities from, uh, from coal to gas in, in such a way that actually when gas production became prominent in the last, uh, in the last two years now, um, gas has become basically the fuel of choice. And, and I think for Lebanon, even so, it may take time to, um, to, to, to actually uh, get to full steam. The process of decarbonating the industries, and I have to say when I woke up this morning and I could admire the beautiful smog around the Zouk um, power plant, um, I, I, on such a beautiful day, I, I could feel that the potential for decarbonating a, uh, Lebanon's um, power sector is, is huge. So that's the number one, um, if you want, um, uh, possibility which, which gas is going to bring. And, and, and this would be interim solutions until basically the, the production of gas saturates the, the, the local demand first in the energy sector and then in some of the other sectors which uh, I had in this slide. So, uh, fertilizers, even so in a small country, which is quite security sensitive, uh, gas-related fertilizers are very uh, delicate to manipulate and are hazardous um, from a security point of view. Gas to liquids, no, not so much relevant here. And also all the petrochemicals chain that uh, we, we have talked about uh, earlier this morning, and, and here we can uh, take reference from what Saudi Arabia, what Qatar, what Iran have been doing um, by basically integrating all the way through uh, what initially was uh, almost like a refused production uh, byproduct um, into actually ma maximizing the value chain uh, around gas. And, and even some other industries, and also this has happened uh, in Egypt and in the Gulf, um, which are very um, power hungry, like aluminium, and some of the other metallurgical facilities. I know Lebanon, given its size, he, he's not geared to become a, a prime metallurgical um, country, but uh, it, in industries where small is beautiful, um, specialized metallurgical industries, it may make a lot of sense also to, to run on gas. Now, I wanted to share with you what's been happening in the U.S. I mean, U.S. development of gas in the last five years is, was shale-driven. And, 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 and Sorry, I'm the wrong one. Yeah, and, um, and, and, and you will see from the slide that um, that development has totally changed um, the way this industry is working. Why? And I think there is one point which we haven't discussed here this morning yet, is what is going to be the cost of this gas? Because when the U.S. was a, a normal classical gas producer, 
its, its ability to become cost competitive on a global basis uh, by integrating around gas was very limited. It's only when shale gas came and actually broke all the, all the cost curve uh, downwards by shifting prices from 10 plus to $2 a, a BTU that actually it, it could act as a catalyst for the U.S. to reindustrialize itself around these industries that actually live and gain competitiveness around cheap feedstock and cheap power, which was uh, gas-driven. And, and if you look at the, uh, at, at the scale of the investments in the chemical industry, which have been launched or announced in the last few years in the U.S., it's, it reaches a staggering number in excess of $150 million. In a country which, if we look at it, was maybe 10 years ago, we would have said the U.S. is in perpetual decline in some of the more basic industries. And, and gas, in very little time, has totally reshuffled that equation as to what is a competitive industrial landscape. Another example is Tanzania. Tanzania is a country which had a recent discovery of gas, quite significant, not as uh, fantastic as, as Mozambique, but certainly very promising. And Tanzania is working on LNG uh, project, but is also um, recently v uh, vetted a massive uh, fertilizer investment project by a German company, Ferrostal, which will actually act not, on, not only as a, as a cornerstone for the industrialization of the country, but also for the redevelopment of the agriculture in a country which has suffered for many years of a rather a clueless socialism from an agricultural point of view. So the, the impact of gasification uh, beyond the industrial aspects which I've just been through is, is obvious in fiscal terms, and that's been discussed already this morning, in terms of improving the trade balance of Lebanon, where basically all of the dirty uh, imports of uh, dirty fuels from, um, from all over the world would disappear and be replaced by local production of gas. And, and, and again, from a cost competitiveness point of view, always bear in mind that the cost which should be analyzed is not really the absolute cost of gas, but actually what you're saving of not importing and transporting stuff from other parts of the world which have already added the, the added value on, on the cost of the, the input. Better power supply, more steady, more reliable, and certainly much cleaner, and a broader diversification of the industry, which would, of course, uh, mean GDP growth. This would also have a tremendous impact on local content, um, training, uh, widening of the industrial sector, um, sharing across uh, society. And, um, and over years, because as, as has been said, it's, it's absolutely imperative that the training starts now, much ahead of anything else. It can have long-lasting, stabilizing, and actually a beneficial uh, effects onto society and the, well, the welfare of the uh, population generally. I thought I would keep, for, for my conclusion, one example, which I think has makes sense in the context of the very delicate regional situation around Lebanon. We, we very often hear that China, Japan, Vietnam, uh, Philippines have great difficulties and uh, at semi-war sometimes when it comes to disputed islands in the South China Sea. In gas, the, uh, let's say the wisdom, the Chinese and Japanese wisdom of not fighting over resources, but, more, but rather so to actually unite forces, unite financial means, and, and get to a proper settlement situation has allowed what was absolutely impossible, unthinkable, to happen, i.e. a joint development zone between countries that do not recognize each other's maritime borders. And I thought 
I'm not here to, 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 to bring morals to, to already a, a very difficult uh, regional uh, landscape. But if, if the region could actually take some uh, reflection from what the Chinese have been able to do, uh, it may also help. Because at the end of the day, in Israel, the development of Tamar, I think, was about three to four billion dollars. It's a massive investment. The Israelis have apparently decided that they will not go for their own LNG export facilities, but rather they could use those of Cyprus or Egypt. It, why, therefore, not look at the future and hopefully soon uh, integration of the Lebanese gas resource into a wider regional pool where either Egypt or Cyprus, which is part of the EU, could be actually the collecting pool for a regional contribution of countries which have everything to gain, first of all, from an economic point of view, by sharing the resource of what otherwise could be almost insurmountable projects to develop or finance on a standalone basis. So I will leave you with those positive and enthusiastic thoughts of a Frenchman. Um, in the context where the EU, which starts in Cyprus, may have slow growth prospects for sure, but has one crucial problem to deal with now, is the reduction of its dependence on Russian gas, which I think will leave a lot of windows for future gas developments and exports from this region. Thank you. Merci, cher ami, pour cette très belle présentation. Nous retenons donc, si je puis dire, qu'il ne faut pas être obsédé par les exportations de gaz, mais surtout insister sur le rôle que le gaz peut jouer dans la croissance et la construction de l'économie libanaise.